Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to session two of the BPS coding sampler session. Um, I'm Haruna. Um, sorry. <laughs> I'm Haruna. <laughs> I'm Rashmi. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> um, let me quickly switch to your presentation today. Have you on? So BPS Summer Coding Sampler Series, um, you got the introduction. This is a session two, which introduces uh, the course Exploring Computer Science. Uh, it is also um, sort of introduction to CS. So we'll get into this. And it's a required high school course for this coding sampler. Um, just in terms of logistics, uh, all our resources are on BPS Learns. So uh, quickly, let me go to BPS Learns. This is our BPS Summer Coding Sampler series. Um, and you saw you participated in the introduction. Now we are in the ECS overview, uh, which talks about you know, the details of the webinar, which will be hosted here. The YouTube link is right here. Uh, if, you if you're joining us live, please make sure you um, open the today's link and we can communicate with you or about your questions using that. Uh, the session to exit ticket is posted here. I've also posted the homework link, uh, which has all the reading article links within it. So you could go to it and um, read the articles and then answer to the uh, response questions. The ECS syllabus is uh, posted here. And then there is a go beyond um, opportunity for you, which we'll talk about a, a bit a little bit later. Um, it's just an exploratory optional assignment that you can take on uh, if you feel adventurous and we say go for it. Um, coming back to the sort of just making sure that uh, if, if you are participating live, please make sure you ask questions, collaborate. Um, we highly recommend uh, keeping track of your assignments. We do not want you to procrastinate. So there is a series of assignments in here. Um, if you can finish them as soon as possible, you'll be ready for the next session as well. Um, definitely collaborate using forums. There's going to be a Padlet link. Um, and definitely, you can email us, Haruna, myself, Nick, anytime uh, if you have questions. Oh, yeah. So I wanted to mention about Nick. So he's, <laughs> Nick is another, uh, the third of our instructors. He hasn't been joining us uh, for these early sessions because he's on his break. But he will be joining us for the later sessions. And he's also available on email if you need, if you have any questions for him. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> so what is computer exploring computer science? Um, it's, it's an introductory computer science course that teaches the creative, collaborative, interdisciplinary, and problem-solving nature of computing with instructional materials that feature inquiry-based approach to learning and teaching. Um, as part of this course, students will delve into real-world computing problems that are culturally relevant and address social ethical issues while delivering some fundamental CS um, concepts. So um, again, it's a, it's, it is rigorous. It is project-based introductory high school course. Um, it is college prep for A to G. So in California, they have these courses that align well with preparing students for college. And this, is, this falls into that category. It is also career technical education approved course. Um, it is sponsored. The curriculum was sponsored by National Science Foundation. So it's a really accredited um, uh, course, approved course that you can uh, implement in your classroom. Um, there is a big professional learning community around this. Over 300 plus teachers have been trained nationally because this is a national uh, curriculum. So it, it allows for more uh, collaboration and um, support uh, in terms of you know, uh, working with different teachers in different states across. It is, of course, free. There are six units. Um, it's inquiry. And as we mentioned, it's equity-based projects. So there is um, sort of culturally relevant project content that gets interweaved into the curriculum. Of course, it is flexible. So you can add as an educator, you can add more content to this and then make it more relevant for the students. Um, there are final projects for each unit. So as we go through this presentation, you will see some samples 
of um, maybe uh, formative assessments or activities that are within the course, um, and also some uh, final project ideas that have been suggested. Um, of course, it is, um, you know, it can work on Macs, PCs, Chromebooks. There are some software requirements that we'll talk about a little bit. So in terms of instructional strategies, um, we, we talked about, you know, there are six units and there are, you know, it is being detailed, uh, plan it's been planned in detail. So you have students will be able to objectives uh, embedded in every lesson and in every unit. Um, there are kinesthetic activities, so students are, there are hands-on examples, there are role play opportunities embedded. So there are many different ways of delivering this content. Um, again, there is a big uh, emphasis on developing the vocabulary, which is the computational you know, systems, computational thinking vocabulary. So it's very important to sort of um, em embed that as you are going through the units or the lessons. Um, it definitely promotes collaboration. There are a lot of group projects that uh, students are working on. And of course, as I mentioned, there is you know, PLC, which is the professional learning community around this. So uh, teachers, too, can collaborate on a very wide scale. Um, various ways of communicating responses is, uh, you know, essentially students have an array of ways in which they can, um, you know, talk about the student project. So, for example, they can do a design project or they could be doing a journal entry um, or, you know, like a coding project. So we'll look at some of those examples. Uh, and of course, uh, within the content, a lot of information about computing careers and how some of this content is relevant to computing careers is, um, is embedded within the curriculum. Um, the website for ECS is, uh, of course, www.exploringcomputerscience.org. Um, it hosts a slew of resources. Of course, the research behind ECS and sort of the goal uh, of ECS. It is a national program, so it um, it talks about where it is and how you can connect to what are the events, what are the news, uh, e uh, what is the news cycle around curriculum changes, or um, you know what's happening in different classrooms. So quickly, let's go to the website, um, and this is essentially the space that hosts most of the information. So the about section has a lot about the research, the partnership, um, national programs, what are the uh, schools participating. Then you have the curriculum module, which allows for uh, you know, some files that you can download. There are six units. And there is a significant amount of information that they've provided beforehand so that you can take a look at it. Um, and sort of decide how you would want to approach it. Uh, there is teacher professional development, and we will talk about it. It's happening in summer. Um, there is some research uh, happening around ECS and how it's being implemented in classrooms. So there are some great published articles and or you know working papers that are being implemented here. So you could have that information. And again, there is a wide um, slew of resources in terms of student resources, teaching resources, some past conference presentations that you could look at that allows for you know um, a little bit more information in terms of what's out there, what are people talking about, or what are they using or modifying in terms of the curriculum. Um, um, there's a good question from Shar mm -hmm. from today's meet. Mm -hmm. um, do I have to take the course through BPS or UMass? Or can I go directly to the site and use the materials? So if um, that's a very good question, Shar. I think um, if you have done the ECS professional development in summer, um, you are eligible to teach this course. However, the ECS program um, team recommends for every teacher or requires of every teacher who is a new teacher to take the professional development offered by them. Uh, and we'll discuss dates about that. Um, during summer so that then they are better prepared to implement it in, during the class. So I believe, Shar, you've taken the course, so you may not have to do the, um, the summer professional development uh, this summer, but you could attend still to see if there are variations in the curriculum. Uh, coming back to our, my apologies. Um, so there is, uh, Champions of Change um, is, uh, you know, sort of, 
an amazing uh, group of people, an initiative from White House, and we have some words from our um, president, President Obama, uh, about you know this Champions of Change, and they focus on computer science. So how about we take a minute um, and hear what they have to say. Give me a second. I'm going to switch to the video. Could you? The new economy, computer science isn't an optional skill, it's a basic skill, right along with the three R's. There's a group who wrote something called the Clue Train Manifesto early on about the internet. It says the internet is just us. Computer science is really about, it's just us connected digitally. Gillian Jacobson, I'm an actress in here on behalf of Amy And I'm Mary Walker, co-creator of Amy Okay, I think there is a problem. Uh, give us a quick second. Um, so we are present to everyone. It seems like it should be okay. Okay. In the new economy, computer science now? isn't an optional skill. Be a it's a basic skill. Right along with the three R's. There's a group who wrote something called the Clue Train Manifesto early on about the internet. It says the internet is just us. Computer science is really about, it's just us connected digitally. Gillian Jacobson, I'm an actress in here on behalf of Amy Polar Smart And I'm Eric Walker, co creator of Amy Polar Smart Girls. <laughs> it's a privilege for us to be able to just celebrate and recognize the work that you all are doing. How can we make sure everyone has a fair shot at success in this new economy? The answer to that question starts with education. I was lucky to go to a school with very entrepreneurial teachers, and they had mandatory science fair. So they made us do this stuff, or we would never have known how cool it is. I really see this as a civil rights issue. Computer science has become such an important knowledge. Everyone has to have an opportunity to learn it. This is something that anyone can do, male or female. And, you know, age really doesn't matter. In my computer science department, I think a lot of the students coming in had never programmed before. So they were kind of already behind a lot of students across the country, you know, at the collegiate level. We want to introduce kids at an earlier age to computer science. Why do you think STEM education is so important for middle school students? Teaching them how to fail, how to push through hard problems, how to be able to persevere, communicating to them through the coding and through STEM education that they matter. And I think that it's important to not necessarily compare other schools, but to see what's working in their school that we can bring it. In the United States, there's no place where a blind individual can learn computer science. So I invented a number of technologies that make that possible. These kids can succeed if you put them in the right environment. We've got these amazing high school students who really could be the teachers and the mentors in K-8. What creative ideas have you used to get your wonderful students engaged in STEM? Finding their passion, every single one of them has something that they're already passionate about. Actually having passion-based learning and showing like, I guess, real-world applications um, was really, really useful for getting the kids in. Well, getting the other students in. Kindness is as important as knowledge. Thinking about teams and kindness and being kind to each other so that everyone can appear as their whole self is really important. We totally agree. I have some homework for you all. I think it's really important for you each individually to spend time in schools, kind of setting an example for kids of what's possible. I've got a plan to help make sure all our kids get an opportunity to learn computer science, especially girls, minorities. It's called computer science for all. And it means just what it says, giving every student in America an early start at learning the skills they need to get ahead in the new economy. Change the world by being yourself. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go back to the presentation. So that was um, and that was a really great uh, positive message from our from the White House, from all the computer science, um, you know, advocates who are who are really working hard to get this CS for all. Um, 
you know, in BPS, in, in all the school districts. And uh, I, I don't know, Haruna, if we can share this yet, but we, we too, um, BPS is also trying very hard to get CS for all for all schools um, in BPS. Um, having said that, let's look at the alignment to uh, the Massachusetts Digital Literacy and Computer Science Standards. Um, yes, yeah, so ECS being a full year, you know, comprehensive course, it really touches upon most of these, um, really all, all four strands <laughs> right. and um, all of these standards at the high school level. So we're not going to point out every single one because we would be pretty much going over the entire high school um, piece of the standards. But it does touch upon computing and society. It talks about not just computational thinking, but also computing systems and all of these other strands as well. Absolutely. Um, and again, you know, as you look through the units, it's always a great, um, you, you've been through the introduction session for the coding sampler. And if you look through um, the DLCS standards and, and as you browse through the syllabus, it will give you concrete connections uh, with these standards. Um, so where do we see uh, exploring computer science? And um, uh, with feedback from teachers, it's sort of, you know, it's, it is the introductory course right now in a lot of BPS schools. So, um, you know, it sort of falls into that category where students are coming in with different or variety of skills, and then they are getting into exploring computer science or into introduction to computer science course, um, and then they get the necessary skill sets to then prepare for maybe an AP computer science principles course or a separate um, sort of second level computer science course. You could also go into a more elaborate engineering or robotics course with, with an understanding of some of the concepts and principles within um, that are necessary for an introduction to computer science course. Um, what are some of the standards that this course is aligned to? Well, definitely, as we look at DLCS standards, that's going to be one of our focus points uh, in terms of aligning our work. But uh, inherently, um, as you can see, there is a website here, httppat.sri.com. They're working um, tirelessly to get the frameworks and assessments align to the computer science content, computational practice, and the learning standards. So they are trying to map it to the content and the learning standards. Um, the focus is obviously uh, more so on, and rightfully so, on what computer scientists do. So that is the main lens with which this content and the um, and the assessments are looked at. Uh, prerequisites, um, it's, it's recommended that you have an algebra course prior to enrolling in this course uh, because of some of the you know, programming requirements in, in unit four, which will be a programming unit. Um, we can do this in Macs, uh, on Macs PCs and Chromebooks, as I mentioned before. Uh, there are some softwares which exclusively work on uh, max and pieces, hence the question mark. But um, maybe, Haruna, you could talk about upcoming robotic software that could potentially work on Chromebooks. Yes, there are robotic software that work on Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. So there is some, um, it is, it, it's sort of the ideal computer ratio is two is to one. Um, Obviously, if you if you do not have that ratio, it can be extended. The group projects can be done with four students, so um, it, it is a more flexible curriculum in that regards. Uh, Scratch, HTML, uh, some Python, and the robotic software. If you choose to do Unit Six, are the software requirements for this course. Um, moving on to Course One or Unit One, um, it is human computer interaction the concepts focus on different components of computers recognizing them what are computers what are the computing systems and suitability of these components for specific applications so students might explore concepts of computers and computing systems uh, there are um, you know they are exploring the world wide web they are researching search engines but they're also looking at some rubrics as to how to evaluate websites. Uh, they explore how computers are used as a tool for visualizing data, modeling. So there are certain elements within this unit that are really helpful in, in sort of solidifying that computer and computing systems understanding. So let's look at um, 
you know, one of the sample assignments. So right at the beginning of the course, you have what is computer and sort of allow students to define what computer is for them. And then they uh, there is an assignment that they will eventually look at. Um, so I'm going to quickly um, go to, I'm sorry. I think I just, give me a quick second. I'm going to switch to the course assignment just so that you can see uh, what it could possibly look like. So in here, what I'm sharing right now is it's literally a daily lesson plan. So you have some instructional materials that goes with this, and you can use it, modify it. Um, so it literally starts with what is computer, and it has multiple uh, ways of uh, you know students can respond to this question. And there is uh, you know there is an activity that students they look at uh, a graphic, they uh, list what are the different um, objects in that graphic and then they look into what possibly makes a computer and eventually uh, with exploration they arrive at their own discovery of course they don't google search it they arrive at a discovery that computers might have an input device it could have um, a way of processing it and then there is an output so it's an organic way of coming to an understanding of what a computer or a computing system could look like um, eventually as we go through some of the curriculum samples they have a little bit okay. ways just because we can't see the text Yes, I can. So Haruna had. So we can. This is a list, and and you'll have an, uh, you know, a. Uh, you have a link of the syllabus and the content within on on the website as well as within here. So you should be able to look at the details of it. Um, of course, it's it's too much to ask to sort of read through this. But this is just I'm pointing out some of the activities the teachers prefer to implement in their classes. And there are many more. Um, so when we go back to say this activity, which you know allowed you to look at some of the, the computers, and the, there are creative ways in which students respond to the prompt. They can create a wordle. They can create. Um, they have many different ways of, as I mentioned, expressing their uh, point of view. So they could be doing a role play, a skit. They could actually be doing a video to explain certain things. One of the projects is computer buying project. So within that, uh, there are exemplars of you know students actually forming a skit where they're interviewing and they're getting the component components that are required, and then sort of going on to you know understanding the details around it and you know they come up with a list of components and there are multiple ways of you know evaluating what actually goes into the computer depending on the client requirement so that's a really great interactive uh, project that students can undertake this is again a scaffolded way of approaching the final project for unit one um, and that could be um, before that, though, um, here is a rubric, sample of rubric that you might be using with your students. Um, here is a website evaluation rubric. So there are inherent um, evaluation formative assessment tools that you would be using with your school classrooms and students that allows you to see where your students are and sort of try to meet them there. Um, and then, you know, arriving at sort of the um, the final project, it is about, you know, it, it asks this big question, which is what is intelligence? And it involves research around Turing test and Alan Turing and, um, and how that integrates into, you know, him being the first person who um, brought in the concept of computing and then worked around it. Uh, he was um, hugely responsible for decoding the Enigma machine um, during World War II. So sort of, you know, bringing, tangible aspects of computing into this, but then um, also connecting it to specific assignments. Um, ECS taps into many different uh, modalities. So for example, they, were, um, they have taken activities from CS Unplugged. Um, they have taken activities from uh, many different places where teachers have found success 
um, you know, sort of integrating concepts into their lessons. So it's a really great way of um, integrating other um, curriculums into um, exploring computer science. So we'll quickly take a look at, um, you know, it's it's really interesting to see what they recommend. In Turing test, you know, they talk about, um, you know, computer bots. And let me quickly uh, switch to um, Eliza, which is a computer bot, and how realistic is she, and um, how we are going to interact with her. So this is just a quick sampling of how she would interact with us. Um, so let's go to Eliza. Give me a quick second. Mm, OK. We are right there. Um, and can everyone see Eliza? Go back a bit. Just yeah, quick, yeah. Like quick on present everyone. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, can everyone see Eliza? Uh, if someone there's could. a delay, so excellent. We okay. Won't know. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so this is your chat bot, and it will allow you to. So I'm going to ask her a question because I know at my end that she is a computer. So I am going to ask her, "How do you feel?" And uh, the idea of the Turing test is to sort of evaluate whether the responses are intelligent and hence an intelligent system, or are we, you know, uh, are we getting sort of noise, which is not really a relevant answer to the question that we are asking. So I'm going to say, oh, so she's saying, um, how is the weather? And you can interact, and students interact. And there are multiple ways of you know, collecting data on these interactions. And then eventually, as you go through the unit and the lesson, you realize that there is a pattern that's emerging. And students realize what an intelligent activity looks like, and also um, discuss about how they would proceed in developing an intelligent computer, which essentially is, you know, eventually would turn into an AI or in artificial intelligence. So it sort of leads the path towards that. Uh, coming back to that's our unit one. I apologize. Um, so when we, I have linked the final project information for you um, as an exploratory um, activity. It's go beyond so that you can see what it is. Of course, we don't expect you to complete that, but it's a fun activity. You can look through it. It's unit one uh, project. So you'll see what students are doing, um, uh, or you can modify it and can share resources with us as well. So all the teachers could potentially use the modifications. Um, now, as we're talking about how people are implementing this in the classroom, there is a really great um, nationwide coding dialogue around ECS. And I'm going to try to share that with you. It's a video. So give me one quick second. Hopefully, there is no, um, there's no flip. Give me one quick second. OK. No, let's go here. Just here. And and then we have the video ready. Um, yes. Give me one quick second. Uh, and before we start the video, Jane Margolis is the creator uh, or the researcher and the curriculum writer for ECS. So it's really great to see her um, sharing her thoughts with us. Um, and here we go. That fell along race and socioeconomic lines. With support from the National Science Foundation, education researcher Jane Margolis investigated why so few girls and underrepresented minorities are learning computer science. She and her team at UCLA developed ECS to reverse that trend. It's for getting kids to understand the problem solving that it is at the heart of computer science. What do we have to do in order to make it correct? What do we have to try? ECS is tailored to spark the interest of all kids, but especially a diverse mix of kids living in low-income areas. My family, we were really poor when we um, came here. This class has helped a lot because it's not only is it computers, but it's also career focused. The curriculum encourages hands-on learning. The kids are let loose to explore and are really encouraged to collaborate with each other to 
uh, brainstorm together, to work together to solve the problem, and to be creative. Like squaring away that robot. It gets complicated because, like, you know, you have to get the codes right. So it, it, you know, if you miss one little thing, it's like, you know, it's all wrong. So you have to be very careful also. Students learn how to think about problems, to create and use technology to express themselves. This is my robot named Bombay. I'm just programming it to do music uh, since I'm a musician myself. This class is amazing. I can never stop learning. Teacher development is a critical part of making ECS a success in the classroom. Here's the challenge right now. Because if all you're doing is following directions, your job's going to be automated. It's going to be a low-skill job that's probably going to go away. So we need to learn how to be thinkers. We need to learn how to be problem solvers. We need to learn how to ask questions because that's where the jobs will be. ECS is having a real impact. Yashua Ortiz took the course and is now working full-time for the web-based company Edlio. Oh, it's great. I mean, it's pretty much been the best opportunity I've ever had. I mean, I wouldn't be anywhere even close to here or where I am in life today if it wasn't for that program. ECS is now being taught in schools across the U.S. Thanks to Margolis' research, this curriculum is introducing more kids to the creative possibilities in computer science. For Science Nation, I'm Miles O'Brien. We are going to switch back to, um, to the presentation. We have a um, really, in the exit ticket, we would like to know how, um, where you envision ECS to be in, in the scope of things at your school, um, in a semester pattern or in, in uh, as a full year course, um, where do you see it fit or would you adapt, you know, units of it, um, activities that would be a really great um, input for us as well. Um, moving on, we have, uh, you know, we are just going to go through, quickly go through the units. Uh, unit two is about problem solving. Again, students become computational thinkers by applying a variety of problem solving techniques. So the objective of this unit uh, squarely focuses on not only introducing the four steps of problem solving as, um, as the research defines it, but also applying the problem solving process and different strategies to carry out and solve problems, real world problems. So we might look at an activity that allows for that. Um, definitely also sort of, um, in, you know, involves concept, computing concepts of binary number systems and converting between binary and dec decimals and, you know, uh, contextualizing topics for the students. There is, um, you know, there is um, a little bit more um, content in terms of linear uh, search algorithms, so learning about these algorithms so that you can define an algorithm eventually. There is, um, they're talking about sorting algorithms, they're talking about um, sort of the, let's look at the final unit project. So as I mentioned before, um, you know, ECS uses a lot of different um, resources in, in defining the curriculum. So uh, MathMania and collaborates with CS and they have a project about minimum spanning trees. Now it is, you know, it's a it's an algorithm and what it means, it's, it's a pretty difficult sort of um, to throw it at students. As you can see, it's lesson 13. So students arrive at the final project idea with many different steps within, but um, ultimately it's sort of, you know, it's a, we all have experiences with different types of networks and this minimum spanning tree algorithm allows us to sort of look at what is the cheapest or the shortest way of linking objects together. Now that's a pretty expansive um, rope, sort of difficult way of defining an algorithm. So what ECS does, it, it, it breaks down that process of understanding certain algorithms into simpler steps. So um, there is the lesson plan that they have brought in from 
um, Big Muddy City, which is from CS Unplugged, which allows them to look at a scenario uh, that assumes a carpooling scenario, which is more regular for students, and then bringing the idea of that shortest distance or the most efficient pathway into that, and they collect data, and then they figure out how this algorithm, which looked, you know, the minimum spanning tree algorithm, which looked different on paper in terms of just variables how does that look with real data and with real problems so then they implement a solution and they can again have more moda different modalities in which they can present that so that's your unit two quickly um, and again when you look at the syllabus you have more detailed um, idea of what scaffolding activities are within unit two Moving on to unit three, which is about web design. Um, there is a lot of information about web design. There are a lot of activities, and this gives you a quick overview of the web design topic. Um, one of the fun, or rather, um, it's, it's a fun activity, but also sort of embeds the responsibility about web design and that's your one of your starting activities which talks about privacy and gives you multiple scenarios with which, which are pretty much real scenarios where uh, as you can see in here you have a company who has contracts with the federal government doesn't want to hire you because facebook friend leaves a lot of enthusiastic illegal postings on the wall so things like that and what could happen so there are specific discussion topics there are specific prompts that students are going through, but it's also a very organic inquiry-based um, approach so that students arrive at conclusions on their own rather than being spoon-fed. Um, again, it's a journal entry prompt so students are writing. And as Haruna mentioned before, you know, they, there is uh, a cross-curriculum connection. So you know, having them write about these allows them to then again bring it into an English language class um, and, and sort of refine it in, in terms of an article or a research paper. Um, we are going to, um, again, I'm not going to go into too much details about a specific activity, but allows them to be part of a, you know, a global society, a global citizen that is aware of um, you know, the privacy aspects, how data positively or negatively can impact, um, and what are the consequences because of that. Um, introduction to the programming is a fun module. It introduces students to basic programming concepts and program design. Uh, they do develop solutions to a variety of um, computational problems with using Scratch, using animated videos or stories. Uh, they build that, and it's it's a fun way of looking at it. Some teachers have implemented Python. Um, um, into ECS, and that's one way to go about it too. But the curriculum in, within here uh, suggests using Scratch, and there are a lot of uh, projects that they recommend. Let's look at the Scratch galleries. I had a I had a fun um, interaction with the Scratch projects in here. So I have uh, give me one quick second. So the first project we are just quickly going to look at is moving. And within this project, it's sort of, let's see if it opens up quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we are going to go inside. Um, it shows you, you know, what's the sprite? So it builds up the whole curriculum. And we have an introduction to Scratch webinar coming up right after this. So we highly recommend you take um, that session so that you know more uh, about the information about Scratch and introduction. But it, essentially, this activity will allow you to look at how each sprite is defined, how each sprite's movement is defined. So for example, um, as you see, the dog rushes past very quickly, while as you know, the other two sprites are moving differently. And the reason for that is the code within it. And again, we highly recommend you take the intro to Scratch webinar to see how all these things come together. This is just one activity within ECS, we will look at um, when they start with the activity, they look at some looping, some iteration concepts, and then they will go to building something like, hmm, where did that go? OK. 
So let's see if this thing opens up. And within this, we have stop. Um, it is allowing the cat or the sprite to move through a specific pattern. So what this does is it allows you to see how it's being programmed. And the students will go through the activity. They will try the programming exercise and then build on to it. Uh, we will introduce some of these um, activities as we go forward in the Scratch curriculum or the ECS curriculum as well. So one thing we wanted to emphasize was as we go through these activities, there is, you know, there are some key discussion questions and a very relevant student will be able to sort of objectives. Um, and, you know, the key discussion questions really focus on, you know, what are the sprites doing? How are they moving? What blocks do the cat, dog, or the monkey, in this case, need to use to move? Um, and they also write about you know, move block, light blocks, or XY blocks that they'll be using. They also sort of talk about XY coordinates. So there is a very uh, deliberate effort in, in making their understanding more clear, writing about their understanding. So if there are gaps in their understanding as they approach the programming assignments, you can catch them. So it's a really great formative assessment, especially uh, with the journal assignments. There are, of course, extensions associated with every project. So that allows you to sort of uh, bring in that extra um, programming concept if you need to, and you can build on it as well. Um, having said that, going back to the library, there is a studio that uh, we will be putting up. It is called BPS Exploring Computer Science Scratch Projects. And it will have upwards of all of these. Right now, they have I have unshared projects in here, but upwards of 15 projects uh, will be shared within that. And we'll share that access with you so that you can have these files ready to use, modify and change as you need uh, as you go through the curriculum. <clears throat> um, so um, that was the quick overview of where the Scratch projects will be hosted. Um, unit 5 is a lot about computing and data analysis. And um, of course, students explore how computing facilitates new methods of managing, interpreting data. Uh, they do identify some very mathematical concepts about mean medians. They do some plotting charts. Um, they do bar plots, mosaic plots. Um, and they look at data in many different ways so that they can analyze what that data really means or does not communicate. So there, is a, there are many ways of sort of looking at and exploring the pitfalls and challenges of what a data is telling you or not telling you. Um, moving on to unit six, um, which is the robotics unit. Aruna, you wanna? Yep, this is the really fun unit where you, <laughs> you get to uh, play with some hardware. Um, mm -hmm. This is an optional unit, obviously, be, uh, partially because of the cost associated with the hardware. Um, but essentially, you will be working with a Lego robotics kit. Um, those, Syllabus says it's NXT kits, but actually they will be EV3 kits now right. because the NXT kits have been discontinued. Mm -hmm. And students use these block coding program um, called Mindstorms to, to program these robots. So there are a lot of building involved, um, sensors. The kits come with motors and sen a bunch of different sensors that you can program. So an example of something they might be programming might be something like create a robot that could follow a line on the floor. Um, and that um, that requires you to look at sensor values, compare sensor values to some sort of a standard number, um, and then programming the robot to behave a certain way depending on what the sensors are doing. And so aside from the Mindstorm program, which only works on Macs and PCs, um, there is a new software that, do, that does work on Chromebooks now. So that would be another option, too, for people who um, don't have access to Macs and PCs. Actually. And um, we are hoping to develop a lending library for these kits so that if you do teach ECS in your school uh, and want to go into Unit 6, you will have access to these kits. Thank you, Aruna. Um, absolutely. Um, and you know, it, it may be a unit that um, 
they, the syllabus says optional, but we highly, highly recommend you implementing this unit because a lot of the learning comes together. Uh, the concepts come together as you implement this. Of course, um, getting the kits and um, having them available for your group projects is one of the, uh, the challenges and a great challenge for us to work on as well. Um, so, um, and, and again, societal impacts of computers is a, um, a really important feature that's embedded within all units. So you'll see multiple discussions about intellectual property, how information can exploit privacy or security options, the legal and ethical ramifications of um, how putting out information, but at the same time, it, the curriculum also allows for a lot of fostering of innovation. You can, as an educator or as a partner, bring in a lot of your um, uh, you know expertise. Uh, please make sure you share if you if you find something amazing in your classroom. Working with your students, please share that uh, with the the larger community uh, on the website or also on the forums that we have um, going in the, uh, in the coding sampler. Um, again, these are the unifying ideas, um, abstractions, modeling that uh, you know, allows for deeper understanding for students, computational thinking, uh, and you know, enhancing those thinking practices is extremely important um, as students you know, work with computer science. And research has shown that that allows them to tackle different types of problems, even unknown problems that might be coming up. So that's what we are trying to um, allow our students to have access to its critical thinking skills. Um, collaborating with peers is an automatic way of sort of, you know, giving giving your input, but at the same time sort of seeing how all of the project pieces come together and the group activities allows for that. Um, and I think just understanding the algorithms and structures and, and building your own algorithms and structures and design components allows for students to sort of approach that, you know, computer scientist objective, which is, you know, they can look at uh, and discern different ways and um, ways of approaching a problem. Um, uh, before we get yes, into that, a couple of good questions. Great. So, uh, number one, should a uh, does a BPS high school computer course in quotes? Um, it, it, does that mean ECS, or are there other computer courses? And I know you're looking into that right now. <laughs> That's a very good question. Uh, and as Aruna said, um, it could be a course option for you. It, um, it, there could be an introduction to CS course. So there are, um, as we especially, I, I don't know how much of it we can share at this stage, but there is, well, yeah, yes. go ahead. So right now we're, we're in the process of developing a computer science pathway. Yes. Um, you know, definitely in K through 12, but specifically in the high school. Um, and ECS is definitely on the table, as yes. are some other curriculums. And mm -hmm. so we can't give you a definitive answer right now, but right now as an introductory computer course, this ECS, is available is, yes and we do have PDs coming up which we'll talk about as well Absolutely. Um, so yes it is one of the options there may be other options <laughs> right absolutely um, and the second question is does ECS match Common Core um, so uh, as I mentioned before there is that pack.sri and they have all the learning standards that ECS maps to and it's a uh, work that's constantly evolving. So I highly recommend, um, I'll post that link in the resources as well. So if you could um, go there and see what standards uh, the assessments and the resources are mapped to, that would be a really um, great way to get started on that uh, conversation. Absolutely. Any other questions, Rod? Uh Not right now. OK, OK. Um, coming to the fun part, which is the assignments. Um, as we said, on, the, on BPS Learns, you have three assignments. The first one is, of course, the exit ticket. Um, second is the homework assignments. And you have some fun articles, some reading assignments. And of course, if you have really fun resources that you could share, please do so with us and with the greater community at large. Um, there is a sampling of the ECS syllabus. Of course, we do not expect you to know this. This is an overview of what is coming in ECS and which brings us 
to the go beyond one. And we talked a little bit about conversations with computers. So go meet Eliza. Go meet all the chat bots, the computer bots, and see how they react. It's a fun activity. Um, and if you don't have any, uh, if you don't have any time, that's fine as well. You could you could try this out at a later time, or you can try out different CS unplugged activities, which are also available in the resources. Um, so having said that, our recommendations are, um, and Haruna, maybe we can chime in together, um, always, always explore beyond what is being covered in these webinars, because there is a big, big, big resource and information out there. Um, and don't be afraid to try things out, uh, <laughs> especially when you're trying um, coding. And, and maybe not necessarily for this particular session, because you probably won't be coding so much. But like when you're, if you're chatting with Eliza, don't be afraid to try some different questions, because you're not going to break it. Right. And um, again, you will have access to the Scratch Lab. So you can try it on your computers. You will not break it. Um, or you can have access to, uh, we, we'll give you access to the Python code. Too. We recommend don't try it right now. If you haven't had any Python training before, but this is a good way to try. Definitely ask for help or questions if you have any. Um, in, in the Post it in the forum. That's a great way to see collab to collaborate, to ask questions. Probably you have an, a question and someone else has an answer, or vice versa. Um, or you can always email us as well. One Sorry, one. I lost this I one. Lost this one. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, and again, try not to procrastinate. We have a bunch of seminars co uh, series co coming up. And I saw from the survey response that a lot of you are planning on taking more than five, which is wonderful. Which is, yes. But they will start to pile up on you, so try to um, Stay, stay um, uh, to Current. the schedule. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and again, uh, you know, all of these webinars or video resources and links and assignments are available to you all the time uh, because they will be available on the YouTube channel. Um, you can click on any. You can watch all the videos if you want. Uh, there are some required sessions, as we mentioned in our information session. You can always explore others and go back and forth and watch them as many times as you would like. Um, definitely stretch your learning. Uh, the go beyond activities are fun, uh, but you can always explore different activities as well from the resources. Um, there is ECS Summer Professional Development, which will be happening on uh, July 18th uh, to 22nd at Framingham State, um, or between August 1st to 5th at UMass Boston. Um, the dates for registration on the website or even on the BPS website are past it, but please email us if you're interested in attending. Uh, we will be able to um, um, get, get you in the in the training. Um, and then, what do you want to talk about that? Oh, yeah, and then there's the Learn, Teach, Lead conference that we talked about last time. Again, this is a learning summit for um, presented by a lot of teachers. We finalized the panelists and the presenters. And it's it's going to be an exciting array of presentations and um, sessions. So we highly encourage you all to register and attend. Excellent. Last but not the least, uh, tune in for our next session, which is uh, Introduction to Scratch. It's an overview session. It will be a great session. Uh, you can learn a little bit more about Scratch and Introduction. I don't know, you want to add? No, um, <laughs> it'll be a fun session. We're preparing some fun activities for you. Um, so we look forward to seeing you there. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and happy computing. <laughs>